you, you know, you can, I, I've watched um, several interviews on yourself and you, you are highly intelligent. Just listening to you speak, you're well read. Um, you are far more than the pimping at the top of your name. It, it, it's obvious that you're a very, very intelligent man. Um, you know, Malcolm was a pimp too, right? Absolutely. So you know, absolutely. Pimp, hey, hey, one more for the pimping. <laughs> Malcolm makes pimping kid. You know, what I'm <laughs> yeah. I come from the same cloth we come from. Yeah, and, and and that's another one. Like you said, well read, well read. Um, was you know, we started at the top of this conversation, and you was telling me about the hip hop fraternity. Mm -hmm. Why was it important for you to found that fraternity and what is it exactly? Well, uh, I was having a discussion with Ice-T. He was telling me about uh, the Zulu Nation, African Bambada now, and he was telling me about the Rap Syndicate, which is something that he had got into it. And he formed the Rap Syndicate based on uh, uh, watching Lu Lucky Luciana or the commission. Yep. You know? and how they had all the bosses sit down. And he was telling me about that. And uh, I was telling him about my son acting in Hollywood and can he get him a job and stuff like that, you know? And you know, we was just talking about maybe we need to have some kind of, you know, union or something, you know? So when people like that come through, you know, we have a way to, you know, reference some people and they have some kind of, you know, assistant. So I came up with the hip hop fraternity and, you know, we concluded that the best way to start it is to create a system where each state will operate like the United States. Each state would have their own governor. And Atlanta would be Washington, D.C. Instead of the White House, we had a Black House here in Atlanta. And each state would be responsible for their chapter. You know, they structure their chapter. We give them a guideline, you know, and they are structured. And then this way, you know what I'm saying, we can duplicate ourselves and create multiple Atlantis throughout the United States. And this would make it easier for them to share each other music, to, you know, have a, a networking system, have a support system, and have a brotherhood and a sisterhood. And we could buy each other music and so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? I mean, almost like a black think tank. You know, I mean, I heard of this organization. I don't want to say the organization, but I heard they got a council of seven. And in this council of seven, they got seven leaders at the top. So each seven of those leaders got seven people up under them to the seven power, and that's how they make decisions, you know, from the seven at the top, and then it permeates throughout the whole uh, community. So us having hip hop fraternity and having 30 chapters already in 30 different cities and over 100 executives, it gives us the power to meet on a bi weekly level and to disperse information. If somebody has somebody that's kind of hot in their chapter, artists or something like that, we all agree to push that artist. So what we meet up as the is at, at the hiphopfraternity.com. So that's the social media. It's the same thing as IG and Facebook. So we all sign up there and we meet there, you know, and we can see each other. They can upload videos. We got daily news, you know, we got HHF radio, HHF clothing, hip hop fraternity award shows. So we self-contained, you know, and, and and you know, we compare each other notes. We we empower. And we, we level each other up. And as we become more scalable in the future, we're going to have our own streaming service like iTunes. We got our own award show, our own radio station. We got our own clothing line, HHF clothing. All those HHF jackets you see on the line, those are our clothing line. So, you know, we are creating a system where, you know, like, for example, if you want to be HHF the Bronx, so we got our biggest, one of our biggest chapters in New York. We got Brother James uh, Gray, who's the uh, CEO. National, national, he's CEO of New York and he's the national spokesperson for the hip hop fraternity. So we uh, help you set up a chapter in New York. We give you a license agreement, but you have your own LLC. So you'll be controlling and running everything yourself, but you'll be DBA as hip hop fraternity. So it creates an avenue for all us to be connected, but yet independent and, you know, be our own sole proprietors when it comes to leadership. I don't know what's going on in the Bronx, but you do. Mm -hmm. So it's better for me to have you start a chapter in the Bronx and let you have uh, autonomy and independence. But yet, you know, you can send all your people over to 
the hiphopjourney.com, which is a social media, which is our IG, where we all can cohabitate and we can all communicate. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and we're a data company. We are a, a, a media-based company. So in the future, we will be allowing other advertising and marketing companies to come and advertise with us on our radio and in our magazine, on our social media. You know, we created that venue for ourselves. You know, we are looking for investors, you know, for growth capital, but they can't own the company. You know, we own the uh, trademark. You know, we own the trademark hip hop fraternity. And the reason why I believe the word hip hop fraternity is developing because you had the East Coast versus the West Coast. You know, you had Def Jam versus uh, some other company. You know, you had Bad Boy versus uh, Death Row, No Limit versus Cash Money. This was a separatist business. But what we're doing at the Hip Hop Turner, we said, look, you know, if we come together on un one umbrella, and if we use our numbers, which is strength, then we can control the entire industry because it's our culture, our call. And we can use that leverage to have record labels to come over and, and give us money to run the system ourselves because we have a system in place. We've got a machine bigger than their machine because we're creating the machine and we know all the components of hip hop. You know, and by me being a literary agent, just signing Boosie to a book deal and signing Ice-T to a book deal and helping uh, me and Steve helping Boosie with the liquor deals and helping them with the cologne deals and helping them over there at Rap Snack. That gives us, you know, another means of uh, avenue of creating equity partnerships with our artists, you know. So we become a management company by default, we become a record label by default, and we're giving them gain. So every Monday we meet, and at the onset of the meeting, we do what you call hip hop facts. So we teach them about cryptology. We teach them about ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, you know, about near fear communication, NFCs and you know, NFTs and stuff like that, the blockchain, cryptology. So they can have a full range about the music business, which is 90% music and 10% um, uh, music, 90% business. There you go. So that's, and then we let them perform for free. And we let them in for free because they artists and we trying to create an American Idol slash Apollo within our infrastructure because we don't never know when the next uh, Michael Jackson, the next Lil Wayne going to come from. It might work at McDonald's. So if you let them come in for free, then you get first dabs at them. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.